All right, guys, you are looking to move to Austin, Texas, or somewhere in Central Texas area. That's what this channel and these videos are all about. I'm Chris Peshek. I'm a real estate agent and broker associate at Peshek Properties. Um, in this video today, we're gonna go for a ride. I am in Wimberley, Texas, which I just did a video about, <clears throat> talking about one of the reasons it's the top six suburbs. So make sure you catch that video if you have not yet. It's definitely in the library uh, on my YouTube channel. And as soon as I can get cruising here across the road, take a drive from Wimberley to Austin. Um, won't actually make it all the way into Austin. We're gonna get back up to 290. Um, just on the uh, on the Austin side of Dripping Springs so that uh, or where I did another recent video dr driving from Dripping Springs to Austin so um, one of the crazy things here in Wimberley is actually if you are on the square is trying to get out of the square which I am trying to do and now I'm blocking traffic I don't recommend that um, but it is Wednesday before Thanksgiving there's a lot of traffic here in Wimberley with the boutiques and everything else so um, you know Wimberley is a really cool town but sometimes the traffic gets a little hairy on the on the square here but all right we are officially rolling out of Wimberley um, coming over Cypress Creek right now if you saw that video Cypress Creek's a really cool little hangout um, and there's a huge bat population under that bridge just like Austin the Congress Avenue bridge you can come here and hang out at some of the restaurants down on Cypress Creek and watch the bats fly out uh, in the evenings during the summer so really cool thing but it's it's nice down there even in the hot, hottest part of summer because there are huge cypress trees down there it has a lot of shade there's a couple of restaurants Creekside and and uh, my drawing a blank on the name of the other one but there's also especially through the nicer months there's a lot of live music there on weekends um, a guy named Kevin Fowler who's a Texas country music artist has now bought up seemingly half of downtown Wimberley and he's getting a, a really big music scene cranked up here um, and uh, there, there's a lot of, of musical artists in Wimberley now. So if you're into especially Texas country music, but really any kind of music, Wimberley's got a, a pretty interesting music scene. Um, and, and again, live music here is booming a little bit right now. So just past a, and what I do in these videos, guys, by the way, is I'm just gonna drive. And this is like, you're sitting in the car with me and we're going for a ride. If you were my client here in the car, and I'm gonna be just talking about all the things that we're passing and passing on my knowledge of the area to you. Um, as a part of that in Drip or in Wimberley here, HEB is on your left. If you're not familiar with Texas, HEB is the is the large grocery chain in most of Texas, especially South and Central Texas. Um, it would be akin to like a, like Albertsons or Tom Thumb or or uh, Randall's, something like that. It, it's a large grocery store. They started in HEB, so it is native to Texas, um, and now they're kind of all over Texas. I don't think they stretch outside of Texas yet. Um, um, but as we're, we're leaving a couple of things that we did pass, if you like plants uh, and, and if you're, you know, or if you're into farming and, and cattle and horses and things like that, Wimberley's got a really great store there called King Ranch uh, or King Feeds rather. And they've got, you know, plants, native plants that you can plant in your landscape year round. They've got vegetables at the specific times of year when you're going to plant vegetables for your garden and things. You know, in the spring, they're going to have tomatoes. Late summer, they'll have tomatoes for that fall crop. Right now, they've got a lot of leafy vegetables and things like that, uh, kales and, and broccoli and cabbage and all that good stuff. So, all right, we are right on the outskirts of Wimberley heading north. This is Ranch Road 12. Um, we're driving towards Dripping Springs right now. And to the left is a little community that is, everybody considers it to be Wimberley, but it's its own governing body. It's called Wood Creek. Um, and you know what? I never got a straight answer on why Wood Creek is its own separate community because everybody down here considers it Wimberley. It's a part of Wimberley ISD, um, but Wood Creek is a different municipality than Wimberley proper. So just a, an interesting note there. Um, and you see this big water tower up here on the left. Aqua Water is the water provider out here, um, but that is that is the Wood Creek water tower. Um, other interesting things for Wimberley, like if you're moving to Wimberley, you're wanting to get some room 
Um, here's the Wood Creek City Limit sign, 1,457, uh, which is actually pretty close to the same size as Wimberley. Uh, add them together and you're looking at about 3,000 total people inside of the city limits here. Um, but usually if you're moving to Wimberley, you're wanting a little bit of elbow room um, and you might be looking for a little bit lower price point, at least historically, that's what people were looking for, a little bit lower price point. Um, you're gonna be able to find larger lots out here starting at an acre and going up to 30, 40, 50 acres. I mean, if you wanna buy 100, 200 acres, it's available here. Um, and that's uh, that, that's the reason people are moving out here. To the right, this is Wintermill Parkway, which is kind of a loop around the northeast side of Wimberley. And that goes to the Kyle Highway. Um, and that will take you to Kyle, Texas, which is over by Buda. Again, another video I did, but Kyle and Buda are on I-35. So that, that would be going east and then south to that Kyle Highway, which then takes you east to I-35. Um, another reason that people are moving to Wimberley is there are smaller schools here. And, you know, if you're dealing with Austin and a lot of the larger suburbs, you know, your schools are going to be 5A and 6A high schools in Texas, which are the two largest classifications. And you're talking about, you know, 1,500, 2,000 kids in the high school uh, up to, you know, even 3,000 kids in a high school, which I think Bowie High School on the southwest side is close to 3,000 now. Eanes is about 2,500. That's Westlake High School. Lake Travis, I think, is pushing 3,000. Wimberley's got to be pushing 25. I'm, I'm sorry, Dripping Springs has got to be pushing 2,500 at this point. So just in terms of the number of kids, those are large high schools. Wimberley is a 4A high school, um, and, and that just got reclassified up from 3A. So it's a small 4A. Um, you know, you're looking at about 800 kids in high school, I believe, here now. So if you're looking for schools that are a lot smaller, you know, you don't want your kids to get lost in, in just the shuffle of a sheer massive amount of students. Okay, Wimberley might be a pretty good uh, a pretty good option for you, and just overall, it's a smaller school district. You're going to know the teachers better. The teachers actually live out in this area for the most part. Uh, some of them are going to commute in from uh, from Kyle and Buda, but you have kids and teachers that are a part of the community, and that's one of the other major things for Wimberley is that that community vibe that you're going to have here. Again, we're rolling north on 12. The whole downtown drive from Wimberley, if you go downtown Wimberley to downtown Austin, you're looking at about 45 to 50 minutes just at, at this time of day, which is, you know, one o'clock on, uh, on a Wednesday afternoon. Now, rush hour, it's gonna take a little bit longer. These roads are gonna be pretty easy to drive at rush hour. There's not a ton of people making this drive. Lone Man Brewing Company here to the right, by the way, which has beer and wine. Um, and their beer's pretty good. They actually won a couple of medals at Great American Beer Festival and the, the te uh, Texas Beer Festival. Um, so you're, you're not gonna have a lot of traffic out this way in the morning, but the reason this part of the drive takes you a little bit longer is because these roads are windy. The ranch Road 12 is exactly what it sounds like. This is an old ranch road. It's not a highway. These roads more than likely at one point were uh, trails from cattle and for people riding horses. So they were taking the path of least resistance. That's why they wind all over the place. And just over time, they went from being horse and cattle trails to trails that were driven by you know Model Ts and Model As. And then that's where the roads were developed because the trees that had already been cut down. And again, path of least resistance. So they were developed into dirt roads and then paved roads. And now we've got paved roads with some smaller shoulders on them. Um, but they're still not round and, and or they're still not straight, sorry. And so the speed limit on these roads is typically gonna be 55 to 60, but most of the time you're gonna be driving 50 or 55 miles an hour with these big curves. So that on this side of Dripping Springs, especially, your speed is gonna be, it's gonna be pretty limited. Um, and then you're, you're having to watch for deer and everything else and then Notoriously, you're going to end up behind a dump truck or an 18-wheeler hauling building materials, so you're going to get slowed down again. What I'm trying to tell you is if you're trying to get to work at a specific time or if you're trying to get downtown to make a dinner, dinner reservation or, or a reservation at the show or a concert, leave yourself plenty of time. Get out early so you don't get too stressed out and, and you know, cuss at too many people on these back roads. Um, speaking of, you know, other locations, Wimberley is about 20 minutes or so to Kyle, about 25 minutes, 30 minutes to, uh, to Buda. 
It's about 15 to 20 minutes to Dripping Springs. So it's a pretty central location. Um, it's about 30 minutes to Blanco, 30 minutes to Bull Verde, which is just on the north side of San Antonio. If you're trying to get to downtown San Antonio, Wimberley is gonna be um, somewhere about 55 minutes to an hour to the Riverwalk. Uh, Green and, and Raffles, you're going to be about 35 to 40 minutes from those two locations. So it's really interesting in that it's right in the middle of a lot of hill country stuff. And it's kind of right in the middle of 281, which is the main highway coming up out of San Antonio on the west side of Austin. And 281 runs up through, uh, through Bull Verde, through Spring Branch, through Blanco, Johnson City. Um, where does it go north of there? Marble Falls, Burnett and then ends up uh, diverting off on the north side of, of Burnett, uh, you know, when you hit Highway 29. So that's 281 on the on the west side of Wimberley. Um, again, 281 is about 30 minutes from, from downtown Wimberley on the west. And then on the east side of Wimberley, you've got I-35, which again runs from Mexico, basically, up through San Antonio, um, up through New Braunfels, San Marcos, Kyle, Buda, Austin and then up through Pflugerville, Round Rock, Georgetown, Salado. I'm trying to think of all the towns. Um, you've got Bell County in there, um, Waco, Hillsboro, and then it splits going north into uh, Fort Worth and Dallas. So I-35 is obviously a major road um, that goes all the way up from, well, from Mexico to Canada um, through the central part of the U.S. So Wimberley, just in terms of, of places in this area, places in the hill country, fairly centrally located. Uh, right here on 12, it's gonna split into four lanes. And Texas is trying to do a better job in the hill country of these, uh, these passing lanes. And so that's what this is. This is a passing lane. So, you know, if you are behind a truck, get ready, you're gonna have about a mile of traffic, uh, of, pa of passing lane to get around them uh, before it shrinks back down to one lane. But from here, you're only about five miles from downtown Dripping Springs. We're gonna take a right here onto Elder Hill Road. And, you know, one of the things the Hill Country is known for is there's a lot of wineries out here. Um, I mentioned you, you had uh, Lone Man Mountain, brewery and winery here you've got, got driftwood vineyard or driftwood mountain estates i think it's driftwood mountain estates i might be wrong on that um but it's a really beautiful winery and vineyard up here um just on the corner of 12 what is it oh i was wrong in both accounts driftwood estate winery sorry um really really nice uh cafe up there beautiful views talk about a place to go see sunsets holy cow they've got amazing sunsets now if it's the hottest part of the summer you're going to want to be inside up there because it is due west facing and it's a it's a stone patio so that sucker will get Get hot in the hottest part of the year but right now I think the high today is supposed to be about 62 degrees It'd be a beautiful time to be up on top of that hill in the sunlight um, Elder Hill Road this is gonna take us from Ranch Road 12 to Driftwood um, you may have heard about Driftwood Driftwood is where oh what is the name of that barbecue place uh, the Salt Lick if you've heard of the Salt Lick that's kind of what put Driftwood on the map um, now Driftwood is known for more than that. You know, they, you've got wineries out here again. Um, there's a couple of really nice subdivisions. I wouldn't really call them subdivisions. They're estate subdivisions. On the right is Vineyard Estates. There's about 30 or 35 lots in there. They're all gonna be bigger than two acres. Um, there are some available in there still. They are not listed on the market. They're off market properties. You know, if you're looking to build an estate custom home, that's a beautiful place to do it. And at this point, we're about 35 minutes from downtown um, Austin. So if you need to be a little bit closer in, that would be a good option for you. Um, we've got another one up here I'll mention when we come by it, which is La Ventana. I just featured a house in there that's on um, four, three and a half or four acres. Um, I think they listed at 900 or just under 900,000. Um, and that's about a 3,500 square foot house. It's a resale, really, really nice. Vineyard Estates, the one that we just passed, 
is not a gated community. It is an exclusive community. You know, those lots in there are are at this point, you know, north of 300,000 for a lot. So you're going to be, need to be building 1.5 to 2 million to have that thing make sense. Um, La Ventana, that's closer in, is a gated community. So even more exclusive, um, and it's an equestrian community. There's lots in there that are that are five and six acres, but there aren't as many lots that could still be built on. Most of those have already been built out. So that's going to be more of a resale community uh, back in there. Uh, but Driftwood now is also known for Driftwood Country Club. If you are looking for very high end, um, Discovery Land Company has been building these golf, golf course resort style communities uh, all over the U.S. and, and even in, uh, in the Caribbean and, and the Virgin Islands, I think, I think they've got some. So they're, they're buying larger pieces of land and they're developing ultra exclusive neighborhoods. And so the land around the Salt Lake was purchased by Discovery and they put in, um, there's two separate sections to it. One is the Creek section and it's on Onion Creek. And then the other one is the golf course section. Um, that's across from the Salt Lake. And there's a hundred, 150 lots in there. Um, those lots at this point are north of a million dollars each. It's going to cost you a hundred thousand to buy into the, um, the community. It is very gated. There is security. Um, it has, you know, people on staff and on standby to, to help with shopping and, and everything else. Uh, by the way, this is La Ventana right here to the right. You can see these big fields in the front. They've got longhorns um, that they have in those fields. And I just slammed on my brakes because in the last month, they put up a stop sign that they didn't need here for some reason. And I always forget about it. Um, but that is La Ventana, that equestrian community that I was mentioning a while ago. Um, so back to Discovery and the Driftwood. Um, on the on the creek side, they've got vineyards, um, and that's the owner of Salt Lake Barbecue still owns those vineyards, and and he's actually producing grapes there. And there's, um, I think it's Salt Lake Cellars. It, he produces wine there, um, and they're going to have um, amenity center, swimming pools, baseball fields, outdoor, all kinds of activities. They've got uh, fishing ponds, um, kayaking, and, and waterboarding, or waterboarding, I would say waterboarding, uh, paddleboarding, a little bit different than waterboarding, um, there on, the, on, the, uh, on Onion Creek. Um, so that's kind of all on that creek side. And then on the other side, on the golf course side, you know, there is a, a world championship golf course. I believe it was, it was either Norman or Fazio designed. Um, and you talk about a beautiful golf course. Holy cow. Um, the fairways are all Zoysia, which a lot of um, PGA members have bought lots out there and are building houses. And they really can't even practice on the golf course because uh, Zoysia is illegal on the PGA Tour, from what I'm told, because it's so dense, it keeps your ball elevated. And for people that are on, on tour and people of that caliber, it's almost like having the ball teed up every time. It's just, it's basically an unfair advantage for them. Um, so they don't even practice on the course. The driving range and the putting range and the chipping ranges and all that out there are bent grass and things like that in Bermuda. Um, but most of the golfers out there, the, the professional golfers, will not even play the course because it just screws them up um, when they you know when they're in tour season so a little bit of a, <laughs> of a tidbit for you um, the houses out there from what I've been told lately most of those things are trading off market um, they are starting in the seven to ten million dollar range um, so again if you're looking for ultra exclusive by the way we are in downtown Driftwood and we just left downtown Driftwood there you go that's how big Driftwood Texas is um, it is ultra exclusive. If you're looking for ultra exclusive close to Austin, that is the place. I've been told that they're going to have a helipad there, um, you know, for people that are needed, you know, with private jets that they can fly to ABIA airport and take a helicopter over. Um, there are also drivers and things like that that are available. Sorry, I had to get rid of a call. Um, and uh, one of the other benefits for Driftwood is they have a, essentially a clubhouse in downtown Austin. Um, that you can rent out for, you know, if you've got business events and things like that, 
Um, it is, when I say downtown Austin, it is on 4th Street in an old warehouse. It's huge. It is beautiful. They really reclaimed all of the original, um, you know, original woodwork and brickwork. And that is still uh, something else that can be used by people that are, that own houses in driftwood. Uh, in the driftwood, let me let me be specific. Um, we just got off of Highway 150. 150 goes to back to Dripping Springs to the north, and going south, it goes to the Kyle Highway. I mentioned a while ago, uh, Winters Mill Parkway connects to the Kyle Highway. Well, 150 kind of bypasses it down there, and it hits at a little store called uh, Hayes City or Hayes Country Store. Great hamburgers, great place to hang out, get margaritas and Mexican food and stuff like that. It's a really cool hangout down there between Wimberley and Kyle. All right, so we are driving on our left here is the driftwood. Um, this is the creek section and you can't see any houses. All that stuff is way removed from this road to keep those you know, as private and all as possible. Um, we did pass the, the guard shack or the guard gate there a little bit ago and I mean you can tell again you've got uh, you've got windy roads you know there's not going to be a lot of traffic on these roads but they are windy and we're coming over Onion Creek here so right when you pass Onion Creek on the left this is the Salt Lake it is an amazing place to hang out with friends and again especially when the weather's nice for me, the barbecue is good. Um, it's it's nothing to write home about, but I grew up around Texas barbecue, so uh, I'm hard to impress. For everybody that comes from out of town, they love the barbecue. Um, another vineyard on your right, Fall Creek Vineyards. They've got really, really good wine. Um, and then here to the right, this is 967. This goes to Buda, and that also goes to the, uh, to the part of the Driftwood Country Club that has the golf course on it. So again, it's literally across the road from Salt Lake Barbecue. Um, and 967 is only about uh, 10 miles long, and it dead ends into downtown Buda. So we're about 10 miles from downtown Buda down there. Continuing here on, 1626, um, sorry, 1826, 1626, a different road. Um, on 1826, this is the road that goes essentially from Driftwood to 290 between Dripping Springs and Austin, and that's the part of the drive that I'm taking you on. So this is 1826. Um, on the right here, these are, there are three sections of Rimrock. This is the first section of Rimrock. Um, Rimrock's an established neighborhood at this point. Uh, they finished building it out right before COVID or right during COVID. Um, beautiful homes. Again, most of the lots in there are over an acre. There are some acre lots. The houses range really from 2,000 square feet up to about 10,000 square feet for some of the custom ones. Um, really nice location. Um, again, probably at this point, 25 minutes from downtown Austin, close to Driftwood. This is in the hill country. Um, you know, just nice. And you've got some older neighborhoods in here as well. Um, on the left, this is this neighborhood's been around since the 80s, but really estate, uh, estate lots in there. That's Woodland Circle. Um, and, you know, just raw land at this point is getting a little harder to come by out here. You're, you're going to have to go and, uh, and, you know, either move a little bit further out to find new builds if you're looking for land, or you're going to be looking at uh, at estate lots for the most part. I'll point out a couple of exceptions here as we go. Um, and now we are coming to, to the left is Desert Door Distillery, and that's Darden Hill Road. Earlier we were on Elder Hill Road, that's Darden Hill Road, and that's where this light is right here. Now, the interesting thing about Darden Hill Road and 1826 from this point back in, for the long-term um, transportation plan out here, this is gonna become a loop around the south side of Dripping Springs. So it's gonna go all the way to the south side of Dripping Springs and then to the west side of Dripping Springs. By the way, the first two sections of Rim Rock are here to our right. But it's gonna go all the way around Dripping Springs and come out on 290 back on the, uh, on the west side. So this road is gonna be developed into a four lane road. It's gonna make travel over here a lot easier. But that last section or the first two sections of, um, of Rim Rock are gonna get a little bit more road noise than what they have now because this is gonna be expanded into a highway. Okay, um, on the left, Parton is a new build community. Uh, those houses in there are starting at about 800,000 right next to the, uh, to the um, fire station here. Um, Parton is a production builder uh, neighborhood. 
And you know, you're gonna find nice homes in there. Okay, Taylor Morrison's building nice homes in there. There's a couple other builders um, that are in there. Taylor Morrison is my favorite that's in there. Um, but those are gonna be a little more subdivision um, and, and it's a master plan community. You're gonna have community pool, community amenities, really beautiful amenities. Um, but but it is going to be that master plan community type thing if that's what you're looking for. Again, not as much elbow room, but you are going to have really nice things like uh, like hike and bike trails and stuff like that. Um, big resort style swimming pool, all of that stuff. Now, you're going to start noticing more and more houses as we come in. Um, some of my prejudices are going to come out here, guys. This next master plan community that we're coming up on, I don't like. Um, the houses are beautiful um, and they're well built, but this community is called Sky Ridge and I hold a grudge against this builder because they came in and knocked damn near every tree that was in the neighborhood where the houses are being built down. Um, and that seriously pissed me off. The hill country is known for its landscape and its trees, and they basically scrapped every one of them that was on the lots out of there. And the reason they had to do it is because they were trying to jam in more houses um, so they could make more money. And I'm sorry, you know, if that's the if that's the house that you're that you're looking for, I'll sell it to you. I'll bring you in there and I'll show you the community. But I do not like that builder. I'm not going to tell you who built them because I don't want to badmouth anybody because their product is good. But the way they develop the neighborhood, I'm just really upset with them about. Um, so anyway, okay, I'm getting off my soapbox now. Um, this road here that we're coming up to is called Nutty Brown. Um, if you take a left here, this runs north-south from 1826 up to 290. Um, this is the eastern edge of a large master plan community. Really, the, the original master plan community in Dripping Springs is about five miles up there, and it is called Belterra. Belterra is about 30, I think about 3,000, 3,500 homes, something like that. It is built out at this point, um, but it, it is a very popular subdivision because it's the closest subdivision to Austin, to downtown Austin, that has uh, Dripping Springs ISD schools, the closest major subdivision. And it's got retail at the front, uh, Belterra Village Shopping Center. It's got apartments. It's got condos. Uh, it is a true master plan community, and it's very, very popular out here. So that's on Nutty Brown up there. They just built a brand new, huge HEB up there, beautiful HEB uh, grocery store. It's also at the other end of Nutty Brown. So from here, it's about five minutes to shopping. Not a big deal. Um, you know, that makes it pretty easy. You can see here on the left again, and it, it is two o'clock. It's a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so we're starting to see people come home from work. These uh, these lights out here are starting to back up. We're seeing more and more traffic. If you're traveling at peak times when everybody else is traveling, it's the price of progress, right? Um, but at this point, we're realistically 20 minutes from downtown Austin. Um, that, that's just one of the things you're going to have to deal with. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, as we're going, there's a couple of more older communities back in here to the left and right. Um, Bear Creek goes both directions. Um, and we've got Friendship Ranch back in here. Kemp Hills is the, is the one that just finished building out most recently. There's some houses that were built in there in the last two or three years. But those are the communities that are going to have more of the, that stretch out lifestyle. Um, real Life Church, there's a lot of Real Life Church campuses out here. They're non-denominational. This is the newest one out here in Dripping Springs. Um, they're all around Austin. Um, and then Reunion Ranch here on the right is the last and most recent um, subdivision that still goes to Dripping Springs. And um, those houses are also all built out, a little bit smaller lots, but between quarter and a half acre. So some of those lots are bigger. And again, that is the closest into Austin now. Belterra had been, it's on 290. It's probably gonna be about a wash in terms of how long it gets to get down, or how long it takes to get downtown between Belterra and Reunion Ranch. Um, Reunion Ranch, beautiful community, was built out through the late 2010s. Um, and, you know, realistically 800 to a million and a half in there at this point. Uh, but again, a really nice uh, community. Uh, fun fact, this ranch on the right, I believe, is owned by the owner of uh, Bucky's. If you've been to Bucky's or if you've heard about Bucky's, the the uh, gas station um, mini mart, gigantic mart chain, um, that's one of his homes right there. 
And so we are cruising now. The neighborhoods that we're going to start seeing now are Austin ISD. Now, this is Southwest Austin. Um, Bowie High School is the high school. It's still a highly sought after school district. Um, Goritsky is the middle school here. Very highly sought after. Good schools. Clayton, Baranoff, and um, I can't think of the other elementary right now off the top of my head. But this school track down here in Southwest Austin is pretty highly sought after. People are loving this, this area. Um, Circle C is the major community down there. Again, huge master plan community. Um, I don't know the exact number, 3,500, 4,000 homes, a lot of residential, restaurants, shopping, um, really anything that you want is down here in Southwest Austin um, in the Circle C area. Um, as we're coming up this road here to the right, this would take you to um, a part of Circle C. And now I'm forgetting the name of it. I'll get to it in a second. Sorry, I'm doing all this stuff off the top of my head, guys. Meridian, thank you. Um, Meridian's got a couple of different parts, kind of the, the subdivision feel. And in, in the back, there's some estate size lots, acre size lots in the back of Meridian. Um, those things really started about a million and a half in those uh, estate size lots. Um, and then you've got a Vanya and Gray Rock, and, and those are all different parts of Circle C. Uh, Circle C is really kind of like its own little little city down here, um, which is, is a little bit crazy. Uh, but again, it's Southwest Austin. Um, this road, you see these people kind of going off to the right. Um, this is the end of State Highway 45, which is a toll road up there um, that's eventually going to end up wrapping around the south side of Austin and uh, connecting to I-35 and State Highway 45 toll on the east side of 35 goes to um, the airport 183, the east side of Austin. So when that, that toll road when that loop is complete, this area is gonna have really easy access to the airport. For right now, 45 connects to Mopac. That's how you would get to downtown Austin. You would take a right here and go north. Um, you would go 45 to Mopac and then follow that up all the way to downtown. From this point, all the way to North Austin, um, at the end of Mopac on North Austin, there are zero stoplights. Um, there is a toll road that goes from the river in downtown Austin um, up to the northern side, again, all the way at the, at the northern termination of, of uh, Mopac. Um, and that's a one lane toll road that you can get off in a couple of different spots at, uh, at 183 and at Palmer. Um, but that's what that road is. And again, it's really nice now. This is on the west side of downtown Austin. It goes parallel to I-35, but that takes you all the way to downtown Austin. So from Wimberley, Driftwood, all the way to here, that's how you would get to downtown Austin. I'm going to continue straight and I'm going to take you to, again, back to 290, which would also take you to downtown Austin because I want to talk about a few things that are going on um, along this road and up at 290 as we go. So, whew, I need to take a breath, man. I've been talking for 30 minutes straight. Um, good time to, to mention this. If you are still with me at this point, this content is probably fairly valuable to you. This may be a good time to subscribe and, and uh, you know, if you want to get notification anytime I put out content like this, which is every week, um, click that little bell notification and, and you'll find out and, you know, you can watch, be the first ones to watch it because sometimes when the market is a little bit different, some of the houses I feature and things like that, they are, um, they're pretty highly sought after and those things can fly pretty fast and with content on YouTube being evergreen, um, you know, you, you may miss it, so you, you might want to subscribe and, and follow me for, for notifications. But staying on 1826 here, um, actually there's a hill right up here that some of the two-story houses you can see downtown. This is a very high hill up here in southwest Austin. Um, the next road, the next major road that we're going to be coming to, and it's going to be up here on our right, is Slaughter Lane. And Slaughter Lane is another one of those major east-west bisectors <clears throat> that goes essentially from here all the way back to I-35. Pause for a quick note. Um, to the left here is Lewis Mountain. 
and we passed Overlook Mountain, which are two very nice um, estate communities. Uh, again, acre and a half lots plus larger homes. Most of them are going to be larger than 3,000 square feet. Uh, pretty, pretty exclusive area here, and, and again, a great location here in Southwest Austin. Um, but Slaughter Lane. If you go back and ask my wife, when she was a kid, she grew up in South Austin. When she was a kid, Slaughter Lane was a dirt road and didn't even make it to, well, Mopac didn't exist then either. So all of this is, you know, in the last 30 years that it's been built and developed. Um, but Slaughter Lane now goes all the way across to I-35. Not necessarily a route you want to take all the time unless you know you, you have specific shopping or something you want to do along there because there are stoplights and it's usually faster to go up to um, 71, 290, Ben White. They're all the same um, east-west bisector. Um, it's usually faster just to take Mopac up to, I call it Ben White um, or 71. It's easier to take Mopac up to there and across and then back down I-35 than it is to go across on Slaughter. But Slaughter is available there for you. Um, and at this point, Slaughter actually goes all the way out to 183 by the airport. They've continued it all the way out there now. Um, so again, just in terms of routes you can take, that is another option. And just as I finish up, here's Slaughter right here on the right. You can tell at this point we've got apartment complexes out here. These were built in the last, uh, I think they were finished right before COVID, so four or five years ago. Um, and then on the left side over here is kind of a little hidden gem. And it's a community that for the most part was built out in the 60s and 70s and, and early 80s. But uh, the, the neighborhood is called uh, El Rey and it is just this little quirky collection of old houses on one acre lots that has amazing amazing location um so anyway just gonna point that out and, and the cool thing about that subdivision is uh well two things one it's right here next to seton ascension southwest hospital this is the southwest hospital the closest hospital to dripping springs um wimberley uh, driftwood all of that but it's also got a really low tax rate that neighborhood back in there so you're not paying normal city of austin taxes it is lower um and then right here at 1826 and 290 we have a, another major heb that just opened in the last couple of years so um this is really the 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 end of this guys um i'm, I'm going to be taking a right showing you downtown austin but this is 290 and this will take you back into mopac and then you would take mopac north into downtown austin so if this is again what you're looking for out of a realtor reach out to me um, i do i know this area better than most realtors um, um, and frankly, I know home construction better than most realtors. So if you want somebody that's got your back that can talk you through locations and, and prime locations and, and where you need to be for, for your commute and things like that, I might be worth a call. Um, I get calls from people like you all the time and I do not have very many unsatisfied customers. That's me gloating a little bit, but I can do it because we're 38 minutes into this video and not everybody makes it this far. See you on the next video.